the book uh, also offers some evidence-based techniques that can be readily incorporated um, into nurses' usual care um, uh, for their patients uh, to promote wellness. Can you give us just one or two examples of, of these evidence-based techniques? Sure. Um, one of the things that I have found as I've done research on this over actually the decades, as I mentioned, is there is just this fabulous wealth of knowledge, um, like from National Institutes of Health and very um, well-founded um, organizations and uh, research-based information. So I look to that information, and one of the things that has been very exciting to me is the expanded focus on body, mind, spirit, the what I call the non-medical, non-prescription kinds of interventions, which nurses can readily, readily incorporate. So I address this, and for example, there's just so much information about stress reduction, physical activity, nutrition, all of those things that are good for overall wellness. And an example for stress reduction that I describe and try and practice is I teach nurses that, you know, when you're giving an injection, when you're assisting with a procedure, when your patients are expressing anxiety, you probably also are picking up some of that anxiety. So one of the very simple things to do is just say to your patient, Let's both take a very deep breath and focus in on inhaling. And I do it with them. Like, just demonstrate a very deep breath that is one of the most basic stress reduction techniques. So that's one of the things that's very exciting to me and that is, in, in my mind, very doable for nurses. Um, I also... Implement, I also describe and provide a lot of tools for teaching about your, your um, health, the, the different disease conditions, chronic conditions related to the different systems, like um, how to promote better sleep and cardiovas prevent cardiovascular disease. That's a huge thing with just hundreds and hundreds of articles coming out just about every day. Um, all of the different body systems, respiratory, urinary function, just about every sexual wellness, spiritual wellness, all of that. And for example, a very easy to implement or easy to talk about health education interventions is there's lots and lots of evidence that um, loud noises and exposure to um, noise during regular activities, using power tools and music, uh, listening to music with earbuds that are um, amplified at a high level, that this is one of the major causes of hearing loss. It's not really age-related. We can't just blame that on aging. We need to look at some preventable things that can be done to um, address these issues. So using ear protectors when you're engaging in noise producing activities and reducing the level of noise on your uh, music devices or and using sunscreen to prevent skin cancer. These are all evidence-based um, health education interventions that nurses can easily incorporate. So my book is filled not only with the more complex ones and a lot of tools and tables and summaries of evidence-based information, but there's an, a lot of very easy to hand out um, teaching tools that nurses can give to patients, as well as incorporating them as they're providing care. Ms. Miller, thanks again. The book is Fast Facts for Health Promotion in Nursing. Thank you. Okay. Thank